SAS, search for a warrior. Let's take a look at selection. Let's go. It's day one of the SAS selection course. Chosen from the best of the Australian military services, 130 men are at the start of a gruelling three-week test and a shot at becoming one of the world's elite soldiers. I think, I think, I think everyone has nerves. I think he'd be lying if he said he didn't. Although many of the candidates are already hardened soldiers, only a few will be left standing at the end. You get a lot of guys in these selections that have been in the regular army for quite a while. Let's say it's a couple of years. And they think they're in shape. They forget what it's like to be in even boot camp shape, no less the shape required for these kind of courses. Since we got back from Afghanistan, I've been training up for it. Uh, yeah, can't wait. You're going to see us look pretty messy. Because they push you hard, they need to find out if you got what it takes. And only some of those will be selected to commence training for the coveted Sandy Barrow. There's some soldiers who are bred for this. They are they are just a warrior, a soldier, and all they want to do is serve their country and fight. Uh, in situations where he's at the absolute limits of human endurance to come up with a solution to achieve the uh, the mission at the end of the day. So selection uh, gives us a good insight into the soul of the individual. And these kind of guys know when you're broken and you're at the edge of being broken. That's what they do. So they can tell, are you physically broken? Are you mentally broken? That's a big deal. During this time, they will be taught almost nothing. Instead, they will learn a lot about themselves find out who I am, what I'm capable of, what my limits are. That's what I'm here to find out about. Already in his mid-30s, for candidate 42, it's now or never. It's, it's something I've got to do, I think. I never wanted to get just sort of, you know, to, I guess to 40 years of age and look back on my life and think, fuck, I really should have had a go at that and I didn't do it. You know, that nothing worse than living with regret. Everybody wants to do it. They watch stuff on television, play video games. But the reality of these courses is you look from day one to end of year one, and it just goes on and on. And that's where people decide, I like the vision of it, but I don't want the reality. If you guys like this series, put part two in the comments, and I'll continue it. All the candidates have arrived, and the men ready themselves for an intense physical start. Everyone's just waiting for a bomb to drop. Okay, everyone, stop what you're doing. Be quiet. Listen in. It's a very open-ended question they get given, or set of questions they get given on that particular essay. So it's interesting to see what people actually bring up. You can actually gain a, sort of glean a lot of information out of that, which we use later on down the track. You don't know how you're going to be graded on these things. It could be they look at it, they toss it aside. It could be they expect something. Like he said, they want to see if you're resilient. Is this going to throw you off? You may be a crappy writer, know it, but that may not be the test. The test is how you're going to respond to the request, right? Next, the men are issued with their course kit. Now, any feelings of uncertainty are about to reach a whole new level. All right, what I need to do is take off all of your clothing, including your watch, your underpants, put one set on your feet and put the other four in the S-long bag. Stand up nice and straight when you're done. The cause for us stripping them naked is uh, to level them out. I mean, clearly there are some very fit blokes there. Uh, we populate the staff with as many women as possible also. It's another psychological ploy to uh, play on their minds. Uh, it's not a, not a comfortable thing to be standing there nude with people all looking at you and while you put your socks on. That's pretty interesting. I've never seen this in a selection or an advanced course where they strip you down. Typically you show up with a certain amount of gear, they don't check it because these guys are experienced, but I can see the point here. We adopt a, uh, a method, we call it a silent running when it comes to dealing with the candidates. We don't give them any positive feedback, we don't give them any negative feedback. They won't be told they've done something well, nor, nor done it badly, and that really will play on their minds. All right, have a look at the floor in front of you. You should see some very important paperwork, probably one of the most important. You'll withdraw all at own request form. I want you to put that inside your wallet with your notebook. 
Every candidate's issued a withdrawal and request form uh, at this stage, and it's the only vehicle they have to get off this uh, this course. We basically don't remove people in the first phase of this course. They'll, they'll remove themselves, either that or they'll be injured. And for Interesting. What do you guys think about that? So they don't remove somebody. So let's say you don't make it time to run. You keep going. But you know you failed. I agree with him. That does play on your mind. You know you failed the time to run. Let's say you get through two weeks of the course and they go, you're out. What do you guys think about that? Put it in the comments. I like that concept. I've never been a part of that one, but I like it. For them, when uh, you know, the mind games start playing in their own heads, it, it, they can feel it burning away in their pocket and they have to have it on them at all times. You'll be standing at the end of this course. You'll learn a lot about yourself. You'll learn a lot about the other soldiers standing around you. Be confident. Trust in your own ability and believe in yourself. If you do that, you'll be standing here in 21 days time. So if it's anything like the U.S., you've got the selection phase and you got the Q course. So in the U.S., it can take up to, you know, 90 plus months, depending on what your job is. So if you're some type of specialized intelligence, linguist, it can take a long time. I'm sure it's the same way here. For you guys that know, put that in the comments. Housed in a cold shell of a building known as the embassy, it's past midnight by the time the candidates are finally allowed to sleep. And that kind of wacky music and psychological stuff starts to wear on you. Maybe not day one, but it's like a pebble in your shoe. It just keeps nagging and nagging. It's like death by a thousand paper cuts, right? For inspection, port, arms, DS, inspect the weapons. Have you cleaned your weapon? Yes, sir. A soldier's weapon is his most important possession. It must remain within reach at all times and be impeccably maintained. Hmm. Sir, candidate? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Remove your receiver. That weapon is filthy. A lot of guys screw up on weapons inspections. These things with the carbon, especially if you're shooting blanks, will get nasty very fast. So you have to keep them clean, especially if you're in a humid environment. They'll get rust. So when they say clean, I'm talking Q-tip clean, where all you can see is a, just a film of oil on it. People don't understand how hard it is to get one of these clean, especially when you're toting it everywhere, firing it. It takes a lot more than you think to get one of these things clean to meet an inspection requirements. Where's your guest plug, candidate? I can't answer that question, sir. We have a missing guest plug for this weapon. That's inexcusable. It's a gas plug. What's the big deal, right? Well, in the military, the point of all these things, the smallest thing to the gas plug, all of it starts building on itself. So if you can't be trusted to put a gas plug in, you can remember to fire the right direction when you got live rounds. Remember to do the debt cord for the right duration if you're blowing up explosives. So you see how it all builds. So the little things are just as important as the big things in training. Sir, I should back together. Sir. Fifteen warriors who are at their peak. Stripped from this regiment like that. Fifteen is the number we're going to work with tonight. Most of these men are already experienced and fit soldiers. The directing staff are forced to push the physical pain levels to the extreme in order to begin breaking the candidates down. Here's why these logs matter. So if you got a log and say you got five guys on it and one guy's not pulling his weight, the log will fall. It'll get more on you. Somebody gets hurt. So you really notice the teamwork pretty quick. So if you're not pulling your weight, 
your buddy has carried more, somebody can get hurt. That's what a lot of these evolutions are about, is showing why teamwork matters. Now, where does that go? Well, teamwork matters if these guys are in combat because somebody screws up, it could be your life or everybody else's life, right? The retraining goes on for hours, quickly exposing physical weakness and hidden injuries. That's a key point, hidden injuries. So a guy goes there, he hurt his shoulder a year ago. He's medically cleared. He starts doing this amount of PT. He finds out the shoulder is no good. And that's a shame, but people often kid themselves when they say, hey, am I ready for this deal? They get there and find out that shoulder is wrecked. It's fine for the regular army not fine for this type of training. And no matter how hard the men try, it will never be good enough. That was a poor demonstration. So let's do it again. Push up position. Ready? By day two, the candidates' bodies have been softened up. The regiment now begins to work on their minds. It's a good way to put it. So the bodies have been softened up. So you can only push somebody so hard before they physically break and they're injured. You know, it's, there's hurt and there's injured. You don't want to injure people. And these guys know where the break point is. They may push a little beyond that, but they've been through it. They expect a certain standard of break point. If you don't meet it, you have ouchies pretty easily. You're not going to last. Interviews conducted by serving and veteran SAS soldiers probe for signs of mental weakness. Relax. They begin with Candidate 53, a physical instructor with the military. So you like being the PDI? I do enjoy it too, yes. So you um, like being basically in charge of people? I wouldn't say that too. I just like the lifestyle and the, lifestyle. Uh, the opportunity that's provided me. All the... You know, because they're the guys wearing the tight shorts and the tight shirts and stuff, walking around the base where everyone else has to wear cams and that, they do come across to get perceived as poses or whatever else, but that's just whatever. I've seen PDIs like you come and go before. It's all too hard. Living in the field, bit of rain like this, cold, hungry. You might be ripped and a little bit toned and passed a few of your PT sessions now. You don't get that tucker and that feeling. You know? What's going to happen to that little body you got? That's a great point. You see these guys that are physical specimens, right? They're also fueling that body with top shelf food, supplements. When you get out in the field and you're eating very limited food, some guys' bodies just don't take it. They start falling apart, so that big muscled up guy needs that amount of fuel to stay that way. And they start getting out in the field and eating 500 calories a day, everything goes downhill quick, and then mentally they get shot. It's gonna shrink. You're not going to be able to do what you need to do. No, nah, it wasn't me at all. They have a perception of who they think I am, and obviously they're trying to either solidify that in their own minds or me prove them wrong. I'm not going to let anyone intimidate or put me down for having a crack anyway, so they can think what they want. And they're going to find a crack. I don't care who you are. You're the muscled-up guy. You're the old guy, the young guy. There's going to be something to talk about. The big deal there is how do you respond? Don't say a lot. Explain just what you need to and keep marching. Good evening, sir, sir, sir. Candidate 130's confident entrance quickly evaporates as the interviewers assess his personal essay. What you've written here seems to me as a whole heap of shit. <laughs> it doesn't tell me anything. In an attempt to be different, I wrote, it wasn't flippant, it was light-hearted, merely a, a tale of my life, like Roald Dahl. And comradeship, friendship, loyalty, strength, old school principles. I, that's me, sir, through and through. I still don't know anything about you. That was a pretty vague answer. I'm not sure what he wrote. But they're going to look, in this case, it was the essay that sucked. The other guy, they thought he was a PT freak and he wasn't going to make it. And so as you can see, they're going to find something. Could be in your military record. Could be in the essay. Could be in the way you look. They're going to find something. They're going to mess with you about it to see how you respond. And that's part of the mental stuff. Does that get in your head? Do you think they don't like you? You're not going to make it. 
And it may be your answer was totally fine. They're just not going to tell you. What's your family life like? Families are they divorced? Um, they don't really talk to each other, but uh, I am their go-between. My principles come from my mother more so than my father. What are your principles? Loyalty above all other things, sir. That's one principle. <laughs> <sighs> Honour, friendship. Quite a few um, years. What, before 05? Yes, sir. Um, so it's I, taking you a long time to really sort of... I had some going up to do, sir. Throwing up. The well, arrogance that is perceived, that, that had to be controlled. That was there, was it? Yes, sir. Why were you so arrogant? Usually the arrogant guys... They could be really good at the job, but they don't get along well with others, and people just don't like them. And that's half of it here. Like you said, can you do well in a small team? If you can't, you could be the best guy in the world. They're not going to want you. It's probably a defensive um, reaction, sir, to the unknown. Um, what are you afraid of? Failure. Uh, failure? Yes, sir. Or failure so, to what? Failure to what? To live up to my own expectations, sir. There were so many points I wanted to bring across, but the questions were just, wow, I, I didn't achieve what I wanted to. I really didn't, and I have to make up for it. Move the bar, quick! If you guys like this content, put part two in the comments. New to the channel, thanks for stopping by. For my current subscribers, I appreciate you. Thanks for watching.